what the heck is UGC or user generated content? Why is everybody talking about it? And is it something even worth investing my time into? In this video, I'm going to answer all of those questions. You're probably here for my TikTok, but if not, welcome. My name is Danae and I share actionable self-development and e-commerce tips on there every single day. On here, I post weekly and get a little bit more into depth with those topics. In this video, I'm going to share my personal experience with UGC as someone who has created UGC content for brands many times and also as someone who has hired UGC creators to scale my own brand. Recently, I've been going down an anti-MLM rabbit hole for some reason, but I saw a funny comment of someone asking a anti-MLM creator on YouTube to talk about UGC because they think it's an MLM. So I'm going to clear the air. UGC is not an MLM in any way, but I understand why the person would think that it's an MLM because I would say in the past year, we've seen an explosion of UGC creators and micro influencers. I love TikTok in that you can spread knowledge and learn a lot of valuable information. However, the issue is you can't really filter the good information from the bad information. So there are a ton of people People talking about UGC who don't really have a good understanding of what it is and are in my opinion pushing people in the wrong direction so I hope in this video I can clear up some of those things and just generally share the basic information you need to know before making a decision to start so you can't talk about UGC without talking about influencer marketing my favorite example is the OG makeup influencers on YouTube back in let's say 2015 to 2018 we all remember when makeup influencers would get PR packages and they would present all these new products from these makeup brands that we loved and then we'd go and hoard all this makeup. We've moved into a larger creator economy, meaning that there is a greater opportunity for regular everyday people to become creators and get paid for it. But back when we had those OG YouTubers, influencer and creator, I would argue, were the same thing. So during this makeup hoarding time, influencers created content because they had influence. But now, because we have social media apps like TikTok, anyone can be a creator but if you're a creator it doesn't mean that you're an influencer and and now there in my opinion there is a divide between people who are creators and people who are influencers i think a big the biggest dis distinction is that influencers still have power over their audience and they can influence them to buy products and their audience has trust in them if you're familiar with the content creator anna paul i would classify her as an influencer because she has a ton of power i can't think of a better word over her audience and i'm sure if she recommended a product her audience would be quick to buy it so when we have these influencers brands could pay these youtubers to post about their product and they would probably receive a 10x return from this investment which is great but as society has shifted and social media has changed a ton into respecting authenticity and transparency this influencer marketing does not work the same especially if the influencer doesn't have that much power over their audience and just generally now when we're scrolling through social media we don't want to see an ad and we also are unsure if we can trust these influencers because we know that they are getting paid to promote products so the original investment that brands used to make into paying these creators to post about products isn't as lucrative as UGC. So at this part, I also just want to emphasize that influencer marketing is not dead and, and I th still think there will be a rise of influencers, but the barrier to entry to be of the level where you have so much influence over people is still extremely difficult to get. You could have a million followers on TikTok and 100k on Instagram and back in the day if you had a social media platform with that size or following, everybody would know you. So I think it's a very interesting topic and I'm excited to see how all of this stuff plays out in the next 10 years. So what makes UGC different is that the person making the content isn't making content because they have influence they're making the content because they understand the target audience they have a genuine love for the product and they understand how to elicit that emotion and get the company's sales another reason ugc is important because brands are posting consistently and organically on social media platform alongside ads ugc videos are also used as ads but there is an emphasis on posting a ton of consistent authentic content so girl in her bedroom talking to her iPhone camera rather than renting out a big studio and hiring models and all these people, 
brands can get the same effect or even better if they have more authentic content posting on Reels and TikTok. So UGC content is supposed to fit into the regular content that we see on our platform while still being an ad emphasis on while still being an ad. I think there is a misconception that UGC is just aesthetic videos that brands want. Absolutely not. Brands want to make money from UGC. So it's important if you are looking into being a UGC creator that you understand it is about creativity and aesthetics, but that is only one part of it. If you want to make a lot of money doing UGC, you need to be able to convert your creativity and whatever concepts that you come up with into sales for brand. That's what's gonna take you from an okay UGC creator a brand will work with once to a UGC creator who will want to work with multiple times because your video got them X amount of sales. I'm not exactly how true this is for bigger brands, but I know for smaller brands, UGC is a more affordable tactic. If you think about it, back in the day, a small business couldn't really compete with a bigger brand in the studio and the marketing budgets they had, but you can hire a UGC creator and get a package deal of videos for 600 bucks or even $300, just depending on what you're looking for, and get the same reach as a big brand because of apps like TikTok, and then of course, just ensuring that you're hiring a good creator. Brands like UGC, because it provides them the ability to post authentic organic content, which is converting better with consumers today, and it also also is probably cheaper for them as well. So now I'm going to go over the truth about UGC and clear up some misconceptions that I often hear. The first thing I want to say is a ton of people are saying that you do not need to show your face to do UGC. And although that may be true, I think that if this is something you want to take seriously, that you want to make a lot of money doing, showing your face is something you have to do. I'm sure there's probably a split test out there already, but if you took a UGC video of somebody showing their face and somebody not showing their face, the video of the person showing their face will probably do better because it is more authentic, it is more real, and that is the whole purpose of UGC. The only way you could avoid showing your face is if you're solely working with products that really don't need to show your face maybe it's like jewelry and rings but even then showing your face whether it's jewelry or not will help the audience connect more with the content so yes you could theoretically create UGC content without showing your face, but it's probably not going to do as well. So you need to be confident and feel comfortable showing your face in front of the camera. You also need to be comfortable with knowing that your video could be seen by millions of people. So alongside brands using your videos for their organic content on their TikTok and Reels, they also sometimes just use them for running ads or a combination. Let's say the organic video does well, they could run a spark ad with the content, meaning they just run run an ad with that exact video, your video will get a ton of reach. So you need to be okay with a lot of people seeing your content. So this isn't something that I've heard, but I think there is a connotation that if you have no experience doing social media, you've never had a following of any sort, and you don't really know anything about analytics, you can still do UGC. Yes, this is true because of course you could learn. You don't necessarily have to have a following to do user generated content. However, some brands do look for people who have a platform of some sort. If you don't have a platform, they're going to ask you for your portfolio of analytics. Have you done UGC videos in the past and have those videos converted into sales? Or did those videos get a ton of reach? Did those videos go viral? So if you have no experience having a video that does well or any experience growing a platform, it may not stand out to a brand. Because like I mentioned, there is a rhetoric that UGC is just making artsy videos of, of skincare products and yes that can be true but those videos also have to garner attention and get people to buy the products so if you do have some experience growing a platform it puts you above other UGC creators because brand owners can see yes this person understands how to make a video convert into sales and that's the whole point so if you have no experience or understanding how to hook people in in, what a call to action is, just re just so the sort of basic social media terms and content creation and storytelling, you're going to have a little bit more difficulty 
retaining clients and creating good quality UGC videos. So I think I have a unique perspective of UGC because all of the UGC content that I've created has been service-based. So most people are familiar with doing UGC content for products. So let's say this sunglass brand wants me to make a UGC video for them. We'll connect and then they'll have to ship the product out to me and I'll have to wait for it to come. But I've actually never experienced that because all of the UGC videos I've made have been about services. I'm currently collaborating, for example, with Fiverr for UGC, and I'm just gonna be talking about the service. So any brand can do user-generated content and it doesn't always have to be a physical product. So just wanted to mention that, don't limit yourself to brands that have a product. You could do UGC for any brand, no matter what it is, and it's even better when you don't have to wait for a product. In the last part of this video, I'm going to talk about how you can get started with UGC. I often see people asking, how can I get started? Where do I go? There isn't one particular place where you go to do UGC. There's a variety of ways that you can get gigs. I'm gonna preface what I'm about to say by saying that whenever you do get a gig, it is so important to put your all into making the best content and trying to retain that company as a long-term client, especially if it's something that you wanna do full-time because you're gonna to have to consistently reach out to brands if you don't have a long-term clients. But if, let's say you have four long-term clients that are paying you X amount per month and that's covering your bills and you have some disposable income, that's great. So whatever strategies i'm about to share make sure that if that strategy works you hold on to the partnerships that you have with those brands it's super imperative to do that i even do that as someone who has a, a bit of a following and i've worked with brands in the past to do brand deals on tiktok and instagram reels for example even if i have an affiliate link affiliate link with a brand i make sure that i keep a good relationship with them and provide them with ideas provide them with value show them that i'm interested in their brand and their product and that way i've gotten many reoccurring brand deals and partnerships so it's very good to keep good communication with the brands that you're working with. So there isn't a UGC place, however, there is something similar and those are called agencies. So a lot of UGC agencies are popping up. I've actually worked with one called Bambassadors. Um, I'm not sure if I can link them in the bio, I'll, ch I'll double check, but Bambassadors reached out to me because I have my platform and they see that I can create content. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but if you do have a platform of some sort, make sure you have your email in your bio. This is how you're going to leverage your knowledge of content creation. So when influencer marketers or UGC marketers are looking for creators to do content, they are going to search up your niche on TikTok and Instagram. And if you pop up, and you have proof of concept, proof that you can create content and your emails in your bio, they'll reach out to you. So that's actually how I got my first deal and they're an agency. So once you start working with them, you're gonna be put into their software. Whenever they get a company that wants to do UGC, they'll look through their pool of creators and see who is the best fit, reach out to you and ask you if you are interested in working with them. So when you work with an agency, you have a middleman in between you and the brand. So it's very important to know the percentage of money that they're taking and just have and understand their policy, whether they're gonna run ads with your video, whether they're gonna have the rights over your video, all that sort of stuff. I won't talk about that information in this video, but if it's if you want me to get into the very specifics, I'm definitely interested. So I've personally only worked with ambassadors. I've had an amazing experience with this agency. However, I do hear that some people have had bad experience with other agencies. So I think it's important to Google, LinkedIn, reach out to people who you know in agencies if you see one or someone reach out to you to hear. I also like to go on Reddit, that's where you get the real tea about what's going on so that you are being paired, paid fairly for your work. So an agency is one option. You can also set, send cold emails, but how do you know who to send cold emails to? So if you want higher chances of getting a response rate, I would say to use the site PP Ads or AdSpy. PP Ads, I think, has a free option and AdSpy doesn't and it's pretty expensive. So on there, type in the niche of UGC sort of content that you want to create and then see what smaller brands are running ads for products within that niche. You can look at their ad and see ways that it could be improved, 
recreate it, put a watermark on it and email them and say, hey, I saw your ad, I'm a UGC creator, I think I, I could make a better ad for you, here's an example. And that way you're standing out. They're already paying for marketing, so they have the budget. And if your video is good, they're going to want it. So I think that's a great way to reach out through cold emails using PP ads. If you don't want to use an ad spy site, just start watching ads on TikTok. When you do that, TikTok will push out more ads and then and then you can just save those videos and when you have your days where you're reaching out to brands you can click those videos if you're looking for emails for brands look in the info page of their website if you don't see anything there you can type in the brand name on linkedin and also look on twitter as well speaking about twitter i think that's the best way to find ugc deals right now there is a huge community over there so you would just create a twitter account you can create it with your first and last name and then just make sure that your name is has UGC somewhere in it in the bio. Tweet about UGC, connect with the community, community, have some sort of portfolio or proof of work in your bio, and follow people who have founder, brand owner, e-commerce, or anything along those lines in their bio because those are the sorts of people who would be looking for UGC and obviously follow other UGC creators. A lot of people tweet out you know, looking for a UGC creator and you can respond to those tweets. You can send that, those people a DM. You can also find a lot of agencies on Twitter. There's just so much opportunity on there. Having a Twitter account as well as a TikTok account that is related to your UGC journey will provide you with the opportunity to get inbound clients, meaning people reaching out to you. So in the past, when I've hired a UGC creator to make content for my brand's TikTok account, I searched up UGC on Twitter and on TikTok and I looked for someone who I thought fit the vibe or aesthetic or personality that I wanted for the TikTok account and they got an inbound client that way. They had their email in their bio, I could e easily reach them. So people are doing this every day, people with bigger budgets, people who have bigger brands, people who are looking for long-term creators, they're doing this. So it's good, important to leverage your social media, every social media platform, even LinkedIn, anywhere that you can put that you're a UGC creator looking for work, you should. So. That will increase the chances of you getting inbound clients. Lastly, let's talk about the portfolio. I really, really, really want to clear up this one thing that I see a lot of people telling UGC creators to do that I think sucks and you absolutely should not do. Putting what is UGC and why you should use UGC on the first page of your portfolio. No, absolutely not. Most likely the brand knows what UGC is. And if for some reason they don't, they can Google it or you can put that information on the bottom of your portfolio. But there's absolutely no reason for you to waste your time including all of that information in your portfolio. What we need to see in your portfolio is yes, you doing UGC work, but I would say the most important thing is to emphasize your understanding of how to make a video that converts showing your analytics of UGC videos that you've done in the past or on your own social media of videos going viral, getting a lot of views or getting a lot of sales. That will make you stand out above anything else. So instead of focusing on putting all this information about UGC on your portfolio, emphasize that you know how to make content that will go viral or get people to convert. Emphasize your understanding of how to create a viral hook or how to retain viewers to watch the whole video. Especially if you're reaching out to huge brands, you don't need to put what UGC is. And if not, you can put that information on the bottom if it's something that you you know, you want to include. So I don't care what's in your portfolio as long as you're providing analytics of videos that have done well or your ability to, to create content, garner an audience and understand that conversions matter most. So that's it. I hope I answered all of your questions and concerns. If you have any more, leave them in the comments. I could definitely do a part two. And if you are super interested in doing UGC or now that you have a better understanding, not interested at all, let me know in the comments. I would love to talk about it.